Everything we know, every star, every planet, every atom in our body originated from a single point, infinitely small and hot. A cosmic explosion, the Big Bang, which set time and space into motion 13.8 billion years ago. This is the story we've been telling ourselves for almost a century. The foundation of our cosmology, our most precious snapshot of the newborn universe. But what if I told you that this image, perhaps the most iconic of modern science, might be wrong? Or, at the very least, incomplete. New discoveries, coming from our most powerful telescopes, and new ideas, challenging the foundations of physics, are painting a very different and much stranger picture. A picture in which the universe may not have had a beginning. A picture in which the key evidence for the Big Bang, the cosmic background radiation, could be a giant delusion. We will delve into these revolutionary theories, analyzing the evidence and ideas that could force us to rewrite the textbooks. If these topics fascinate you and you want to stay up to date on the frontiers of knowledge, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Every theory needs a killer proof. For the Big Bang, that proof is the cosmic microwave background, a faint radiation, a kind of thermal echo that permeates the entire universe. According to the standard model, it is the residual light from the very hot plasma that filled the universe about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. When the universe cooled down enough, atoms formed and that light became free to travel, cooling with cosmic expansion until it reached the frigid temperature of 2.7 Kelvin today. The tiny temperature variations in this map are considered the seeds from which galaxies were born. It seems like a perfect story, maybe too perfect. Recently, a group of astrophysicists, including Pavel Krupa and Ida Gergo, published a study that drops a bombshell on this narrative. Their idea starts from a startling observation made by the James Webb Telescope. It found enormous, massive, and already evolved galaxies at extreme distances, corresponding to when the universe was less than a billion years old. These are the so-called impossibly early galaxies. According to the standard model, which predicts hierarchical growth, these galaxies should not exist so early. And here's the crucial point. To form so quickly, these galaxies must have had a furious, almost instantaneous burst of star formation. And to do that, they had to have an unbalanced stellar recipe, that is, with a disproportionate amount of enormous, very hot, and very luminous stars. These giant stars live short lives and die violently, immediately enriching the galaxy with heavy elements and dust. Now, put the pieces together. You have billions of these incredibly luminous, primordial galaxies lighting up throughout the universe in a distant era. Tall, this blinding light is immediately absorbed and re-emitted by the dust they themselves have created, thermalizing it. What do you get? A diffuse, almost uniform background of radiation coming from all over the sky. A background that, due to the expansion of the universe, would appear to us today, cold, in the microwave spectrum. You understood correctly. Their shocking conclusion is, what if the cosmic microwave background is not the echo of the Big Bang, but the summed and recycled light of the first galaxies? Their calculations are astounding. In the most conservative scenario, these primordial galaxies would contribute at least 1.4% to the energy of the cosmic microwave background we observe. But in more realistic scenarios, considering the inhomogeneities of the primordial universe, they could explain 100% of the signal. The galaxies we see today would be nothing more than the dying embers of ancient cosmic bonfires. Wait, this doesn't mean the universe isn't expanding. The evidence for expansion is overwhelming, but it does question the idea of a hot and dense beginning as we have always imagined it. Our pillar, the cosmic microwave background, might rest on completely different foundations. Okay, the picture of our newborn universe may need to be redone. 
But does this completely eliminate a zero moment? To understand this, we need to talk about a frightening concept, the singularity. In standard cosmology, if we rewind the tape of expansion, all matter and energy converge to a single point at time zero, a point of infinite density and curvature where the laws of physics as we know them cease to exist. That is the Big Bang singularity. But singularities are strange. Let's take a black hole. At its center, there is a physical singularity, a point of no return where space-time truly ends. But its boundary, the event horizon, behaves like a coordinate singularity. It seems like an insurmountable limit, but it's just an artifact of our reference system. In theory, we could cross it. What if the Big Bang singularity were like that, a temporal horizon rather than a true beginning? For decades, physicists have tried to give shape to this idea, an idea of eternal inflation. Perhaps our universe is just a bubble that began to expand within a larger multiverse, a space-time that is in a state of perpetual inflation forever and ever. Our Big Bang would not be the beginning of everything, but only the beginning of our corner of the cosmos. Another, even more radical vision is that of physicist Roger Penrose with his conformal cyclic cosmology. The idea is that the universe goes through infinite cycles, or eons. The end of one universe, an incredibly cold and empty future after heat death, becomes the Big Bang of the next eon. The concepts of time and distance lose their meaning allowing an infinitely large universe to reheat and become the infinitely small beginning of the next one. These scenarios seem like elegant exits, but in 2003, physicists Bord, Guth, and Villenkin formulated a theorem, the BGV theorem, which seems to close almost every door. In simple terms, it says that any universe that, on average, has expanded over the course of its history, cannot be eternal in the past. It must have had an initial condition, a past boundary. This theorem seems to condemn us to have a beginning. Yet even here, there's a but. The theorem speaks of a boundary, but it doesn't say that it has to be an insurmountable physical singularity. New studies have explored the possibility that our universe is extendable beyond that boundary, into a larger space-time that existed before. But there's a catch. This smooth transition only works if the primordial universe was almost perfectly homogeneous. Any small fluctuation in density would close this door to the past, transforming the boundary into a true and hard physical singularity. But we know that galaxies, stars, and ourselves are the product of those ancient density fluctuations. So, the very fact that we are here asking ourselves these questions could be the definitive proof that our universe had an insurmountable beginning. So, where does all this leave us? On one hand, we have concrete observations that tell us that our photograph of the Big Bang is probably wrong. On the other hand, we have pure mathematics that tells us that a beginning is almost inevitable unless we take refuge in complex geometries that our very existence seems to contradict. Modern physics is raising profound doubts about the Big Bang model, not to deny it, but to evolve it. The question is no longer if there was a Big Bang, but what the Big Bang truly was. Was it the beginning of everything from nothing? Or was it a transition event, like the solidification of water into ice? His inevitably leads us to reflections that go beyond physics. The Big Bang, in its simplicity, offered a moment of creation that was, in some way, philosophically and even theologically comforting. It gave order, a linearity to our existence. The alternatives we have talked about tear this certainty away from us. They place us in front of a dizzying idea, the possibility that reality has neither a beginning nor an end that our universe is just a phase, a breath in an infinite cosmic existence. And this touches the deepest chords of our being. If the universe is eternal, is our existence less special? Or on the contrary, is it the inevitable consequence of a cosmos, 
that has had infinite time to try all possible combinations until it created beings capable of looking back and asking about their own origin? Science is not a body of absolute truths, but a dynamic process of questioning. And this uncertainty is not a failure. It is the engine of knowledge. And what do you think of these revolutionary ideas about the origin of the universe? Let me know in the comments. I can't wait to discuss with you. And if you liked the video, subscribe, leave a like, and share it. It's very important for us. Thank you, and see you next time.